so Valentine's weekend just around the corner, I thought I would cobble together a little makeup menu for you that is appropriate for Valentine's Day but also doubles up as a very simple, everyday kind of makeup look. And this time round is 100% drugstore. Makeup, brushes, tools, okay fine, there's one exception and it is the Shuemura eyelash curlers just because I've never found an eyelash curler from the drugstore that performs as well as this but I'm open to recommendations but this is just a kind of dewy skin, quite a nice flush of pink on the cheeks and then a neutral lip because when you think of Valentine's Day makeup you might think of red lip but for me I want to kiss on Valentine's Day and that means that you've got to go a little bit more neutral on the lip otherwise things could get slightly messy <laughs> but it's a nice subtle everyday friendly look that you could also beef up with some like false lashes if you were going on a night out or wanted a bit more oomph to it but I'm going to stick to the more pared back version and I'll suggest beefing up options as we go the first thing that I'm going to use is from Rimmel and this is their lasting finish 25 hour nude foundation really like this one I use it in the colour 100 ivory and I'm going to take this on my Real Techniques buffing brush. One pump and we'll see how far that goes. Quite a lot comes out this one actually so we might be alright with just the one pump. I'm not going to use a primer because this actually lasts really well on me anyway. And it kind of has quite a medium coverage to it and quite like a dewy finish which is nice. You're going to look very fresh and glowy and radiant with this one on. Then I'm going to go in with my Maybelline the eraser eye. Give it one twist and then just pop that under the eyes and also slightly down at the centre of my nose just because that's where I get a bit of redness and around my mouth. So I'm just sticking to areas of darkness and redness and then blending that in again with my Real Techniques buffing brush which is just a great little brush. I was looking through my brushes to get all my drugstore ones out for this tutorial. I've got a whole bunch here of Real Techniques and Zoeva ones. And I realised I own three buffing brushes. I'm not sure how that's happened, but I've got three. That's how much I love this brush. So I'm just pressing that in under the eyes and I'm actually going to go in with the Real Techniques Miracle Complexion Sponge, which I love. And I'm just pressing that in further and also kind of using this all over the face just to make sure everything is 100% blended in. I really like doing this step. I just feel like it meshes everything together really well and looks very natural in its finish. Because I want this to be quite long lasting, I'm going to go in with my powder of choice which always comes into play whether it is a drugstore makeup menu or not. It's from Bourjois and it's their Healthy Balance Powder. I use the shade 51 Vanille and I'm just going to take that on a Real Techniques Duo Fiber Face Brush which is a really good brush for all kind of powders if you want a very sheer and natural finish. I actually really like this for blush because it just gives a really tiny amount of flush to the cheeks but it also works for bronzer, powder, the lot. I'm just using this on my T-zone because I'm actually going to go in with a cream blusher later on and otherwise it gets a bit cream, powder, cream, it's just nicer to put cream on cream so I'm just going to leave this kind of area of my face bare from powder. Also you kind of get a natural glow because I'm not going to use a highlighter in the look, you just get that like natural oils poking through. If you wanted to go in with a bronzer here you could and use something like the Kiko Masterpiece Bronzer in the shade Forward Sienna, I really like this one. It's a nice kind of mix of a lighter kind of bronze and then you've got more of a deeper bronze in the middle. I feel like Clarins did something like this a few years back but this is one of the new ones from the Kiko Spring collection which is very pretty. I really like the Rimmel Sun bronzers or something like that as well but I'm actually just going to go in with blusher because I want this look to be more about the blush rather than like a warmth to the face. I want it to be kind of poppy in the cheek area so I'm going to use this again from Bourjois and it's their cream blush in the shade 01. I love this stuff. It's a very nice corally peachy pink and whenever I see someone use it in a video I'm like wow that looks incredible on them like so many skin tones this is going to work with. You could use your finger for this and I'm kind of contemplating that on my Real Techniques multitask brush. Hmm. I think I'm going to go for the multitask brush let's see how this goes. I'm just going to load up my brush a bit, take off the excess on the back of my hand and then just pop it on the apples. I love this brush for blusher, <laughs> that was really hard to say. It just fits on my cheeks really well, I always feel like I'm getting the right amount of colour that I want in the right place that I want, it's very foolproof for blusher. I think I'm going to go, I'm going to go a bit heavier, Ooh, I never normally do this with blush, but I thought because I'm going to go quite neutral on the lips it would be nice to have a bit of that like romantic flush somewhere in the look. 
So complexion done, I'm going to move on to eyes and firstly I'm going to dress my eyebrows and I'm going to go in with the Maybelline Brow Satin. This is in the shade Medium Brown. I've spoken about this in a video before, I'm not a big fan of the pigmenty spongy tip side but I am a big fan of the little retractable kind of pencil side. This is really good and reminds me a lot of the Anastasia Brow Wiz. So I'm just going to go in with an Eco Tools spoolie that I've got and brush out my brows. It's the only thing this thing is missing, a spoolie. And I do love a good spoolie when it comes to brows. And then I'm just going to fill in any sparse areas with the wax. And then it's just a case of building up the colour, kind of brushing it out and blending it in, and then assessing if you need to go back. I think with there with brows, I can never really tell because I can only see a tiny little screen right there and I always look like Helga from Hey Arnold in that tiny little screen. Then when I come to edit, I'm like, actually Anna, it's all right. <laughs> so I'm going to move on to eyeshadow. I'm going to curl my eyelashes first with the one cheat in this look and that is the Shoe & Mirror eyelash curlers. So I was having a look through my stash thinking what is the most long lasting eye product that I have and this just came to the front of my mind. I was like, yes, you need to use this. You haven't used this for ages. It's from Rimmel and it's their Scandalized Shadow Paint. This is in the shade Rich Russet. Lily got me into this. She used this basically every day, I think, for about half a year. And it's a great kind of creamy taupe that you can put on. And although it looks wet and it's wet for about a minute, it sets and then it does not move. I was kind of playing with it and like blending it out and that looked really pretty and then I did one stripe of it on my hand. Came back to it about a minute later and I was like, oh, and it just was not budging. This is like serious, serious stuff. So I think I'm going to do one eye at a time when it comes to this. And I think the way I'm going to go about it, hmm, how am I going to do this? I'm going to stripe it on and then I'm going to quickly kind of blend it all over the lid with the Real Techniques base shadow brush. So let's do this. Let's act quickly. And then blending it all over the lid. And it just goes to a nice, sheer, kind of taupey wash of colour. I'm gonna do that again and just build up the colour till it gets to the opaqueness that I want. Blending it out around the edges as we go before it sets. This is so pretty. It really reminds me of the Becca eye tints that I've always wanted but never got around to purchasing. Always end up swatching those in store and they just go on so beautifully sheer out. They feel very cooling and this feels very cooling too. I can feel it turns kind of from cool and then you can almost feel it setting. Like that is no longer tacky and that is not budging. And actually this brush is a good one because it can kind of spread but then it also blends as well. So now that's set, I'm gonna go in with kind of a slightly darker shade in my crease just to bring it out a bit, add a bit more definition to it. And I'm gonna go in with the L'Oreal La Palette Nude and use one of the matte, it's like kind of a matte lilac-y gray here. I think I'm gonna use that one on a Zoeva soft definer brush. Just take that through the crease slightly, not a lot, just to add a bit of extra something. It's quite nice, like a pinky kind of mauvey brown. And then just to make sure that's all blended out, because you know I love my blending, I'm gonna use the Zoeva 288 crease brush. This is a little bit more fluffier than the last one. Just making sure that is all nicely blended. I really like this look. I think it just looks very subtle. There's something there, but you haven't tried too hard. So here is where you have an option to beef it up if you so wish. You could do a really nice black eyeliner look and then do some lashes. Some individual lashes would look amazing. Personally, I'm going to stick to a bit of nude eyeliner on the bottom lash line just to brighten my eyes and get rid of any redness there. And for this, I'm using the Rimmel Scandalize Waterproof Kajal Coal, I think it's called, in the shade Nude. And then I'm just going to go for serious lashings of mascara and I'm going to use the L'Oreal Full Slash Telescopic, the waterproof version. I get a lot of people tweeting me this thinking that it is the old one that I like that came in the blue tube and it's just been repackaged. It's not the same, the brush is a little bit different, the formula's not as good I don't think, but it still holds a curl and it gives a nice amount of definition, a bit of length, a bit of volume, all that good stuff. Oh my god, that thunder. I'm supposed to be going for a bloody run. Okay, I think I'm on about layer four here. I'm going for it, I'm really uh, going for a very lashy look. <laughs> I think I'm gonna pop a tiny amount onto the bottom lashes as well. Why not? 
On to the final steps, and for lips, as I said, I'm going glossy, nude, kissable, <laughs> cringe. And I'm gonna use the Tanya Burr Lip Gloss in the shade Lunch Date, which I thought was really appropriate. Maybe you're heading out on a lunch date this weekend. Who knows, but it's a very nice, kind of peachy, needy lip. And then as with all lip glosses, I'm just doing the tap. Making sure it's not as shiny, looks a bit more natural. Perfect, done. Final step, the L'Oreal Infallible Makeup Extender Setting Spray. Really like the stuff, I do think it does what it says on the tin and it does help to set your makeup without feeling tacky. It just kind of dries down and you don't even know it's there. It's a great alternative to powder. Even though I did use powder too, I'm going for a really long lasting look here, so I'm just gonna do a few sprays. I'm sure it says two and I end up doing about six, but you know, wait for that to dry. Flap your arms about a bit. And that is the finished look. It's basically a take on the look that I've been wearing for the last month or so, but I thought it was a bit nice to do it for Valentine's Day because there isn't as much focus on the lips. There's a bit more focus on the cheeks, which I really like. But thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you want a tutorial on this hairstyle, this one here, this is how I've been wearing my hair basically for all videos that I've put up this year. I'm going to be doing a tutorial and that'll be up on Sunday if you want to check that out. But thank you so much for watching. I hope you have an amazing Valentine's Day or Galentine's Day if you're like Leslie Nope. Galentine's Day for the win. And I will see you on Sunday with a new video. Bye.